So what I'm about to share with you could very well save people's lives. It has definitely impacted my practice as a paramedic and has probably saved some, some of my patients' lives potentially. So what is that? Well, it is called nasal or nasal capnography. It's capnography that is read through the nose. You may have heard of it, you may have seen it, you may have never heard of it. I'm going to explain to you what this is and what can be done with this that can potentially save someone's life. So how does it work? Well, you put it in someone's nose, like that, like you would any other nasal um, oxygen or nasal prongs, whatever the case is. And what happens is that when the patient breathes out, you're able to read their capnography because on the end of it, there is the connection for the LIPAC or the ZOL, and on the other side of it is oxygen. So you can have nasal capnography and you can have your oxygen at the same time while someone's still talking to you or not talking to you. We'll get to that now. So why is this valuable or when or where should we use this? Capnography is often a very underutilized tool. Um, it's that one vital sign that we don't really consider that often in my experience. And so what this does is that this allows us to monitor a different part or a different aspect of a patient that isn't always monitored very well. So a SADS probe monitors you know, perfusion or how much oxygen is being carried or how full the hemoglobin is in the blood. I've made a video about SADS. It's not quite the video right now. And so how this differs is that it picks up, well, it's much quicker. So a SATS probe has SATS lag. Um, so it's like one to two minutes delayed is the SATS probe. But capnography is instant. It tells us now if a patient stops breathing, we know straight away. So what, what I've seen in, in places that I've worked is that the rule or the guideline they have is that any patient who receives any sort of narcotic has to have nasocapnography. So if they get fentanyl or morphine or midazolam or ketamine, they have to have nasal capnography. And what that does is it monitors their breathing and makes sure that they keep on breathing. Because these drugs can slow your breathing or stop the breathing, this is just another way to protect and ensure safety in patients. So there, is a, there, there was a recent um, news article where I think it was this child was given like 500 milligrams IV ketamine. I'm not quite sure. I think they mixed the dose or calculated the dosing correctly and this led to the child dying um, likely because the ketamine stopped the breathing um, if they were monitoring that child or that patient's um, capnography with a nasal capnography the monitor that is plugged into gives an apnea alarm so the for example the life pack gives a very clear distinct apnea alarm that i'll hear from a mile away that tells us that there is no more uh, ventilation happening so it is just another I, it is another monitoring tool to ensure patient safety. It makes sense to use. Often underutilized, as I said. So where I used to work, they would have every patient who was um, short of breath or patients who had difficulty in breathing. And this also included all patients who received any sort of narcotic. So if they were, like I said, being given fentanyl because of pain, we're still gonna put them on nasal capnography because fentanyl can stop breathing. In the same way, if they had a seizure and now we're giving them like midazolam for the seizure, we're going to put them on nasocapnography because it can stop their breathing. So this stuff can save lives. So um, it's a, a event that I've had or something that um, a case that I've gone to is that a patient um, shot themselves in the head, unfortunately. And what happened was that I had my partner have a BVM and then she was ventilating the patient while I got ready for an RSI. This wasn't necessarily nasal capnography, but it, what this did is it let me um, able to then monitor the ventilations of the patient. And while I was prepping tubes and drugs and all that I needed to get ready for the RSI, I heard the apnea alarm, which is very confusing because I had my partner bagging the apneic patient. Um, and when I turned around, I saw that she was still bagging, but there was no chest rise. So I quickly assessed and she wasn't doing a proper head tilt chin lift. So I, I just gently helped her do that. And, I, and we suddenly saw chest rise and we saw a increase in the ETCO2. So it was a clear sign for me that I might be busy doing something else or, or I might be um, distracted or we might be in their moving vehicle. And it's not always easy to monitor someone's breathing, especially if they're sleeping or if they've been sedated. Um, this does that. This does that for you. So this increases patient safety. Guys, if you found this helpful or useful, please hit like and subscribe. Or you can drop a comment. I'd love to hear your thoughts and opinions. Thanks for your time. Bye for now.